Hey guys, it's Trice here, formerly known as Mr. Dragon Triple Zero, back with Automation the Car Company Tycoon game, and what you're seeing right now is one of my latest builds called the POP203. This car, based on my POP295, is an ultra lightweight car that weighs less than the P295. I created that car exactly one year ago from today and it retains most of its styling while compacting it down to sacrifice looks and to save weight and cost. Even though I no longer have the video available to show you exactly how I made the P295 thanks to my old channel getting terminated, anyways I'll explain how I made this car throughout this portion of the video. The body that I've used to make this car that weighs as much as a person is made by a modder named Gizmo Props in his 60s oil crisis microcar mod file. It's available in the Automation Steam Workshop, or you can check it out with the link in the description below. It has a lap time of 2 minutes 7 milliseconds at the quote unquote Top Gear test track and 3 minutes 18 seconds 52 milliseconds at the automation track. It has a top speed of 74.5 miles per hour and a 0 to 60 in 17 seconds flat. This vehicle uses a ridiculously small and light 203cc inline 3 engine that produces 12.6 horsepower and 12.6 pounds feet of torque. It has a fuel efficiency rating of 13.2 miles per gallon and weighs 277.6 pounds or 125.9 kilograms. And for the market, since this car weighs moderately more than a typical person, it doesn't compete with anyone in the market. In terms of how I made the P203, the panel material we made out of carbon fiber of a monocoque chassis also made out of carbon fiber. It's probably the first time I'm showing you this in my automation videos, but we're using a rear longitudinal engine placement, and the front and rear suspensions both use a McPherson strut. With the quality and pretty much everything at a plus 15 to significantly reduce the amount of weight to this vehicle, for this puny ass engine, it's an inline 3 engine made out of magnesium with the bore and stroke squared off to 50 millimeters, which gets it to 295 ish cubic centimeters, or exactly 294.5, with pushrod headers made out of aluminum silicone. For the crank, it's made out of billet steel with the car rods at lightweight titanium and the pistons at lightweight forge. And for the variant capacity, I lowered the bore down to 45 millimeters and the stroke lowered this down to 42.5 millimeters to get the true engine size to 203 cubic centimeters or 202.8 cubic centimeters. For the compression, it is set at somewhat of a high 10.8 to 1 ratio. The cam profile raised it up to a 62. For the fuel system, we're using a single barrel eco single carb setup of a race intake running on ultimate fuel with the fuel mixer set to a 14.7, the ignition timing set it up to a 61, and the RPM limit set to 6500 RPM. For the headers, we're using long tubular headers. It's kind of interesting. This is the lightest of all the headers on here. You would probably think that race is the least in terms of weight because it's at the bottom, but actually, as you can see in this little chart here, this little graph, it says the weight is at 2.4 for the long tubular, but 3.6 for the race tubular. So kids, long is the lightest. And we got no choice of having a single exhaust with the exhaust diameter set to the lowest of 12.7 millimeters, which is half an inch of the exhaust diameter. And of course, no cats or no mufflers whatsoever. For the drive type, we're using a rear-wheel drive setup of a manual 4-speed with the top speed set to 76.1 miles per hour. And of course, everything is still quality spammed. For the tires, I pretty much kept the width as is, but we're using cross ply hard long life tires with a tire width for the front and back set at 45 millimeters, with the tire diameter set to, I think, 330 millimeters in diameter, running on 10 inch carbon fiber rims. For the brakes, they're the smallest, most slightest, and also most powerful in the game here. We're using carbon ceramic one piston brakes with the size set at 160 millimeters for the front and back with the pad type at a comfort setting because these are unnecessarily big for this light of a vehicle. For the aerodynamics, nothing much, no other tray, brake airflow just a tad up to a 5. Interior, as you can see, did not put an interior whatsoever, but imagine if we do have one in here. A single seater, basic interior, no entertainment whatsoever. So for the safety and everything, no power steering, no trash control, and safety at a none with negative 15. It's kind of interesting, I know I said this before, if you set it to a plus 15, look at the weight here, going from 277 to 322 pounds by putting a plus 15 for 
for the safety, it would have been at a zero here. It would have been at about 300 pounds. At negative 15, as what I said, 277.6 pounds. So the best way to reduce the amount of weight at a significant level is set the safety to a negative quality setting. And last but not least, for the suspension, everything basic, standard springs, twin two dampers, pass the sway bars, with a super duper stiff suspension. Despite having a lot of problems here, such as having strong oversteer, wheel spin, roll angle being too high, quality issues, terminally oversteering, high ride frequency, damper speed too hard, brake force being too high, clearance issues, wheel spin, rear tires being narrow, and more clearance issues, let's go to BMG Drive and test this lightweight and atrocious vehicle out. So here we are at Grid Map, the most boring map because it's wide open and everything, so take a brief look at this vehicle. I know I've used this body for the third time because you could shatter records with this body, and why is the car moving? Also, I got the P295 set right here, so let's compare the differences between the two, and we'll weigh them. So comparing the difference between the 203 versus the 295 is one, the body shape and everything. The P295 is just like a peel, but more in terms of length rather than how tall it is. And it resembles just as similar to the real-life POP50, where that vehicle was made in the 1960s, and it does retain most of its looks in terms of the P295 versus the P50. And also, the chassis is somewhat exposing with this vehicle in terms of the front and rear of the vehicle. But with this version here, same lighting setup and everything, but I did add some indicators on here. Added some hinges here to the door and the rear. Eh, just as similar in terms of just the styling and everything. And while I'm at it, let me change this to the weight pad and see how much this vehicle actually weighs in BMG. It's kind of interesting. Versus automation and BMG, the vehicle weighs differently. Like an automation, this is like 227 pounds. This would probably be somewhere in the abyss. I would say like an automation, it's 227 pounds. And BMG would probably weigh something else because I think the fixtures and a couple other things really affects the weight of the vehicle what you got in automation versus what we get here in BMG Drive. So park the vehicle, we get the weight of this vehicle at around 263 pounds or 119 kilograms. Despite being 227, we get 263 in BMG Drive. So the P295 gets 369 pounds of 167 kilograms. So roughly a 100 pound difference between the 295 and the 203. So while I'm at it, let me respawn the vehicle, remove all the others to do our basic performance test with this here vehicle. So for our basic performance test, the first thing we're doing is the 0 to 62 acceleration test. Next would be the 62 to 0 brake test. And lastly, a top speed run with this particular vehicle of how light this is and how horribly this engine performs. Maybe. I'm not so sure, but it could beat it, but I'm not too sure about it. So get ready to start with the 0 to 62 acceleration test. Go. And go into first gear, and oh boy, that vehicle was bouncing big time. Going into third gear, some pulling to the left here, and mild look like Oversteer is trying to kick in, but I don't know if it is kicking in. 0 to 62 in 12.94 seconds of 728.31 feet. So for a brake test, this is kind of interesting how I try to achieve this. So get this to, uh, let's do 64 on the cruise control, go to realistic gearbox, and get ready to hit the brakes right about now. 62 and hard on the brakes skidding out of control 62 to 0 in 3.55 seconds of 162.64 feet you would think for a lightweight vehicle like this to pretty much stop on a dime but no it skids out of control slides all over the place and it takes a while for it to stop so try not to hit the brakes of this vehicle so hard if you want to come to a stop so top speed run already in effect, and this is kind of weird how the vehicle just bounces and everything. I tried the one with the chassis on this vehicle, and it doesn't bounce as much. And I also noticed in the back of the vehicle where the rear suspension pretty much breaks apart. At top speed wise, we are well beyond its top speed, 75 miles an hour. We're not at the red line mark just yet, 78, 78 miles an hour airspeed and speedometer, so close enough. 79 according to the speedometer, airspeed still at 78, so top speed run is a pass. Second time in a row in this series, so get ready for a crash test, and oh boy, look at all that smoke, because we don't have a catalytic converter, none of that. So unfreeze physics, go to 100 times, whoa, 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 boy. 100 times slow-mo, almost screwed up right there, there goes the front of the vehicle embedding into the wall, loose polygons over the place, and we got the beer about to come off, the hinges, I don't know, so get ready to go to 16 times. Coming out of the wall, the front headlight, the main headlight has come out. 
It goes that beer too, the front plates, everything else in general, so full time. And it goes the tire. There's the damn tire. The engine somehow, somehow still runs. If it were to be front engine, then the engine would have given up already because it hit the wall so hard and it broke it. But it's rear engine, so it don't matter. And second of all, how is this moving on its own, spinning in a freaking circle? So looking at this vehicle here, let's just use a free cam. So looking at this vehicle, we are spinning out of control somehow. Is this wheel attached? Uh, yes it is. That wheel's attached. That wheel's attached. It, they're like up against each other like they're a set of gears or something. And we bangled this up pretty bad. So now let's get ready to do a time trial run with this mediocre PLP-203. For the time trial, we'll be going to Italy at the Port Gymkhana map where I did fail to drive the freaking Speed Bus 4000 through thinking I was going to clear the, the shipping container, but that didn't work whatsoever. So now we got a smaller vehicle, more compact. It should fit just as nicely. And we're going to be doing three laps of this race. So get ready to head on over to Italy right now. So here we are way behind the start and finish line with the janky ass POP 203 and not only that, are we inching forwards to the- <laughs> We're for real inching forwards to the start and finish line, so give me a minute while I inch further and further closer to the line, that's where we start for time trial with this here vehicle. You know what, to say screw it and start right now because it'll make an unfair advantage, so 3, 2, 1, get ready, go, and wheel spin the second gear and more beam and G's shifting screw ups. And first corner, we wiped out. And hit the back end pretty good. Let me take control of the vehicle because I don't trust... Oh boy. With the chassis on and everything, it'll probably perform a hell of a lot worse because the rear end of the vehicle, it was bouncing like crazy. The same suspension setup, the McPherson strut, and this suspension setup of how the rear springs and dampers are like super duper stiff. I tried the one with a soft suspension setup. I think they're like 22 kilograms per millimeter or something like that for the springs and dampers. And oh boy, that vehicle drove like shite. So despite being a Jib Conda course, we are kind of drifting here and here. Like doing some minor league drifting, but not hardcore Jib Conda Ken Block, Tanner Faust type of drifting up in here. But no, that's not the case with this vehicle. Look at this. Already losing control because it oversteers like hell. The 295, I think it handles a bit better because they use wider tires. I think 85 millimeters, the, the least you can go in the game without doing some crazy modifications by making the tires super duper small. So it's real. Hoo -hoo. Damn, this thing is like real, real scary to drive and U turn. Damn. Now I gotta reverse. And. Damn, that's a close call. And not only that, the back of the vehicle, we got some sharp polygons going on. It's like the back of the vehicle disintegrating somehow. And not only that, I didn't even realize this time trial will take this long for three laps. So we get that lap time. Holy oh crap, about two minutes, seven seconds, 239 milliseconds, and I almost screwed up the front of the vehicle back there. Hopefully there are room for improvements on this lap here. So watch me at the brakes here. Around 30%, not even 30% on the brakes, the tires lock up. And also the key to keeping this vehicle control is like if you're starting to lose control, just let off on the throttle and just slowly counter steer. Lost the headlight, as you see here, but mm, minor front end damage, but we're fine. We're doing just as fine. Oh boy. Oh, dude, dude. As you look at the back left tire, it is like wobbling big time. The drive wheels, it's just wobbling like crazy up in here. So we're about to get ready for our third lap. So a second lap time. Let's be careful to throttle. And oh boy, we are losing a lot of control. Two minutes, 10 seconds, 744 milliseconds. A lot worse than the first lap. And doing that, we still script the front end. Didn't even script the tire alignment. That's surprising. I mean, all everything out aside, look at the back tires just wobbling like crazy. This is, I'm not even, I'm not even going a straight line anymore because it's doing that. I think if I keep driving this vehicle, the tires will probably end up coming apart or something, be separated from the suspension, and we almost hit that little crate container thingy right there. Normally when you see something like this, when the frickin' tires are coming apart, this and that, you'd probably be better off increasing the node strength so the, it just doesn't even happen. So, progress support, 1 minute, 39 seconds, 354 milliseconds, we got checkpoint, 146. The split time, 32, almost 33 seconds from the, this lap versus the second lap. Oh my god. And avoid the damn river. 
Woo. I'm trying to fight control this thing and it doesn't even want to stay straight anymore as you can see with the drive wheels you've been seeing for quite a while that it's broke. What if I check the J-beam by hitting control B? So that is your beams. That is the light or what? Like what's broken? We got that broken. I don't know. So this is the last checkpoint. Yes, here we go. Forward or the way. I don't even care about my life, my sanity or this vehicle whatsoever. Hey, two minutes. Uh, 46 seconds, 889 milliseconds, with a total time of 7 minutes, 4 seconds, 872 milliseconds. This car pretty much deserves it. Let's just reverse it in the river. Don't crash it because we already crashed just enough. Just dump it in the river. Nice. So let it float with water. Flood it. Hydrolock it. Boom. <laughs> Beam 234 just broke. No sh It's because the tire exploded upon impact. What else could you say? So how would this compare to the P295? Does it load on here or no? Uh, yes it does. To P295, gonna do this very quickly, hit play, and get you back with the results. So here is the P295. No rear engine because it is, I think it is a front engine vehicle, so you can recall. Yes, a transverse? With a turbocharger. Wow, I was a mad scientist back in the day with this type of vehicle. Anyways, more stable, more cleaner than the P203. So I'm gonna start off the time trial and get you back with the results. And probably throw in some highlights, screw ups or whatever is here and there throughout this time trial, if they are any. So right off the bat, we nearly two wheeled right there. And I think the car endos from right around because you've seen in the thumbnail, well, the thumbnail to that video, yes, it does endo. And sticks to the ground like it's a goddamn grip machine up in here. Oh my god! Oh my god! Damn, this thing grips! And flips, too. Okay, for the first time in this video, whip the bitch. Mm, just do an endo and do a quick-ass turn. That's good enough. Damn, now that's... that's a tight turn. God damn it, I just killed the engine. I can't restart, so... Damn it, I was doing good right there until that happened. A crepe load of time later. Jesus Christ, you wouldn't even believe how long it took me to complete this damn course. So with the P295, a 4 minutes, 16 seconds, 162 milliseconds, compared to the P203 of a 704, we did roughly 3 minutes and 50 seconds better than the P203. I was having a lot, I mean a lot, of troubles trying to contain and control this vehicle. Keep it all four tires on the ground, all that good stuff is because every time you take a corner, it just tips over. Especially when you hit the gas, it really tips over because of it having a high center of gravity. So no crashes, no other good stuff. Let's just jump it straight over to Car Jump Arena to end this video off. So here we are at the top of Car Jump Arena. So we got a four light, a five light, get ready to accelerate. Now, Accelerate here is a 203 just minding its own damn business. And all right now, max top speed, kind of redlining. Now we are redlining and look at that major oversteer because one, lack of aerodynamics and the tires. And really, this is the best it could do? I can't even go above the red line and explode the engine at 79 miles an hour. Base drop, all four tires still attached, and I swear. No, I would say, I swear if we just keep ourselves all four tires on the ground and just ride it all the way down the ramp here, there goes the license plate. So we're just tumbling over, good enough here, just keep tumbling down, and more down, and more down, end over end, and back. No, we are still tumbling. Hit the top of the shell, the roof, and on our side. Let's bring this up upright with 30% uh, strength, just do that. <laughs> So engine's still running, of course. 0-62 to 62 in about 6 seconds, 240 feet. And this thing got mangled up big time. Main headlight is gone. We got ourselves a somewhat anime-looking face up in here. And the rear suspension, the springs, are exposed. And now yeah, that, fun thing about this vehicle, since it's being this light, max strength this, grab the roof, if I can grab something. I don't think it's working out. Let me reset this and try this out. How about up here? Before we drive it off the bridge, just yeet the bitch. Like... Oh. My God. Just like the P295. <laughs> Made it broken. It's a big freaking chunk of sharp metal mess. Just.
boy, look at that. All right, last part of the video. As always on Car Jump Arena, we drive ourselves to the top of the bridge here, go all the way down to crash at the last bridge pillar to get a high speed crash test going. At 0 to 62, a hell lot worse, 9.81 seconds of 460 ish feet, and hopefully I can stay centered once I hit the last bridge pillar. So get myself over the curb if I can. Watch the steering. Be careful to steering and also tire wise. Angle ourselves in. Oh wow, this could be difficult to do so. Either I get up to top speed and F7 it, or just improvise somehow. I go into zero gravity back to Earth or whatever. Might as well just F7 it one side. Yeah, F7 it 79 miles an hour. And just go all the way at the final bridge pillar like so. Get it like close to the ground so like if we are on the ground, we are in the air. Alright, good enough. So hopefully this does cooperate with me. 60 times slow-mo, get a camera going like right around here-ish. High DUI, 60 times slow-mo all the way, go and... Yeah, just as good. So, 100 times someone right now. Here goes the front of the vehicle, embedding into the stairs here, and it's going to be all stairs, not pillar. So here's the vehicle. Front end's being smooshed in. It's backwards being smooshed in, and everything about this vehicle is just a complete mess. 60 times slow-mo. Do the headlights still work? you damn right they do. It's a full-time. It should still run somehow. Since it's rear-wheel drive, all that good stuff, let's just... Bring it over right here at 20% strength and figure out if this thing can still drive. Let's just accelerate. No, because our drive wheels are above the ground. And like before, and like at every crash test, or with this specific vehicle, or just basically any vehicle, we got the front end completely smashed in. The windshield wiper right here, a single windshield wiper, is bent in an awkward fashion that it's taking an L. That's kind of weird. So this thing got demolished big time. That's all I got to say about this vehicle. We got loose polygons everywhere, and this thing became a rectangle on wheels with a little butt in the rear. So that'll do it with automation and BMG Drive with the P O P 203 And why are you accelerating? Comparing the difference between the P295 and this car, I think this car is way more uncontrollable than the P295. This car oversteers like crazy while the P295 grips like hell, but has a tendency to roll over because of it having high center of gravity, having no sway bars whatsoever. While that car is powerful, this lacks in power because it has one thing in mind, being extremely lightweight and over 230-ish pounds in automation and around 270 in BMG Drive. You can't beat that, ladies and gentlemen, unless you can beat me, just let me know if you do so. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos like this in the future, and also check out my social media down in the description below. So this is Tries Rising Up, and signing out.